Hey guys, I wanted to do a little uh, series on uh, dynamic split tunneling with the ASA, uh, you know, and the Anyconnect VPN client. <clears throat> so I've got a, had a lot of questions on this um, come up lately. So I wanted to kind of show uh, dynamic split tunneling. So before we get into the config and how to set it up, I mean, first of all, I'm just going to show you making a VPN connection within my uh, environment here. And you'll see here currently I'm I'm actually doing full tunneling. So uh, a window, <clears throat> and you can see here uh, tunnel mode is tunnel all traffic, right? And my route details is just quad zero the default route. So uh, I wanted to show that real quick, and we're going to go through uh, setting up dynamic split tunneling. We'll come back and look at how this how this changes here. So. Uh, I'm going to jump over to the ASDM and uh, we'll do the rest of the setup over there. All right, so here we are in the ASDM. Um, before we get started, uh, just want to kind of talk about dynamic split tunneling. So, you know, it's become a pretty hot topic with the, um, you know, the pandemic and so many people working from home remotely. But the idea is that, um, you know, instead of full tunneling everything, uh, back to a headquarters, I um, I can choose what domains I want to not be sent back over the tunnel, and I want to split off so that the uh, end user can uh, access that site using their local internet access. So pro providing a better end user experience ultimately, and some of them are obvious, you know, like maybe Netflix, something that's really high bandwidth, you know, using all the bandwidth, but also like WebEx, and that's been, that's been a popular one, you know, like Zoom um, is another big one. So um, instead of uh, tunneling that traffic back over uh, the tunnel and out through the internet at the, um, at the headquarters, I just uh, allow that, uh, that, that application, WebEx, to go out the local internet at the user's house. So that type of traffic, SAS, O365, um, you know, big ones that we see uh, a lot of customers using uh, or, or targeting for dynamic split tunneling. So I uh, just wanted to kind of give you guys a, uh, you know, heads up on what I'm seeing it used for, but we'll kind of jump in and um, start the configuration here uh, within ASDM. So I'm going to go to configuration up there. I'm going to go down to remote access VPN. And then uh, go to uh, the uh, network client access, and then down um, to the uh, um, AnyConnect, uh, or I gotta go to advanced first actually, advanced, and then uh, AnyConnect uh, custom attributes. I'm gonna add one here. And then I'll uh, give it a name. Maybe a, give it a description also. Click OK. Click Apply. Then I'm going to go down to Custom Attribute Names. I'm going to go ahead and click add, and the, uh, the type is the one I just added there. It's the only one that's, uh, that's available, so, you know, I got that one. But I'm going to add some uh, domains here, so go ahead and uh, click add here. And I'll, uh, you know, put some values or some domains in here, so, um, you know, I'll, I can do youtube.com, and just comma separate these. And do uh, Netflix.com, and let's uh, let's do uh, you know Cisco.com. That'd be uh, good ones that we can show and test. So add those. Click OK, and uh, click OK. Now I gotta give it a name. This.
There we go. Exclude domains. Click OK. Click Apply. And now we're going to go back up and go to uh, our group policies. I'm going to go to my group policy that I used earlier in the when I first connected. And click Edit. And I'm going to go to Advanced and Split Tunneling. Uh, I'm going to uncheck the Inherit Policy. I'll go down to Tunnel All Networks. And uh, that's going to allow me to tunnel everything. But I'm going to go over here to the Any Connect Client. And I will go to, uh, let's see here, it's the, uh, there it is, uh, custom attributes there. And I'll click add. And I'm going to, my you can see the one I added, I'm going to select the values. There's my exclude domains that I set up. It's the only one that I set up for both of those. So the only options, I click OK. And then I'm going to click OK. Click apply. And I'm going to close that. There we go. It's applying. And then uh, now we can go and test it again and uh, check out uh, how it works. I'll see you over on the console. We're back over at the VPN client. So we're going to make a VPN connection again and take a look at um, dynamic split tunneling. Right, VPN connection. So we're connected to the VPN. We've got uh, tunnel all traffic, but now you see here we've got dynamic tunnel exclusion, and we're we've got the list of domains that we're ex excluding. And you can see here that. Uh, We've got our static route, but we've already got some traffic because I've got a couple browser windows open going to YouTube right now. So you can already see the non-secured routes here to YouTube that are already already uh, populating. But if I go bring my browser up here, there it is. So now we got the browser up, <clears throat> and we saw the. Uh, you can see I've got a couple tabs there to YouTube already up. And so that's why we're pulling in this YouTube. We've got our AMP client right here that I've got up here in my in my toolbar that has um, that's connecting out to Cisco. So you can see that that's already starting to pull up there. Cisco domains that are being excluded from secure routes. We don't have Netflix yet. So let's see if we go to www.netflix.com. And there you go, you see Netflix popping up in the uh, non-secured routes that are going directly uh, out to my internet connection. So this is uh, definitely one way to do it. An another way to do it, and if you kind of think about how Cisco does this, and Cisco and Cisco, you see, um, is you can see here I've got Umbrella. And you can see here I've already, my Umbrella is active. So... If I were full tunneling, and if you remember on the last video, whenever I, um, the last time we first did this connection, this green check mark was not here for the umbrella. And it's because of the integration with umbrella and the AnyConnect client. So if I make that full tunnel, umbrella knows I'm tunneling everything back to my head end where I actually have, um, you know, umbrella inspection on that network working. So it, it doesn't need to be active in my AnyConnect client. So now um, that I'm actually, it sees that I'm making DNS requests out and um, locally, well, it's going to go with a green check mark there because it needs to be providing that DNS security for this uh, traffic that's going out to the internet. So, um, you know, one of the things with this whole, you know, secure remote worker and just all the remote workers, uh, you know, these days is, you're starting to see a lot, lot of companies that aren't doing full tunneling anymore. So they put a, a security tool like Umbrella in place that provides you the ability to not only have 
DNS security, but now Umbrella has web proxy in the cloud and firewall in the cloud. So I can um, tunnel the traffic that I, that's interesting to me. So my corporate you know, home networks, my RFC 1918 addresses that need to go to headquarters, I can tunnel those and get to all the applications and services that I have at my uh, data center or my headquarters. But for all other traffic, it's going to go out my user's local internet and I'm going to apply security policies from Umbrella. Those could be DNS security policies and or they could be web proxy policies where we'll tunnel uh, traffic to the uh, Umbrella cloud and we'll do uh, web web proxy in the cloud. So now I got that same security policy no matter where my users travel, home, at a coffee shop, traveling in a hotel, but I also have that visibility as to what they're doing when they are outside of the office. So um, that's really the kind of where I see this going and a lot of people moving is, a, is away from this full tunnel and, you know, um, all my security tools being behind my four walls of my office. And we're kind of going to this uh, de-perimeterization, um, you know, mindset that, that goes back really to the very beginning of the zero trust days um, when you had the, the Jericho forum and things like that. Um, that really set out to de-perimeterize, um, you know, security and IT and provide, you know, basically um, security policy visibility no matter where the users go, no, not just behind the four walls of your office. So um, I know that's a lot of information. If you're interested in talking a little bit more about um, Umbrella or you got some questions about dynamic split tunneling, please feel free to holler at me. Um, and look forward to talking to you. Please uh, like this video and subscribe if you haven't. Thanks. Talk to you later.